is from uh, my research group, the Fire Safety Engineering Group here at Greenwich, obviously a member of GSA, and he's going to be talking about some of the work that uh, we've been doing here at Greenwich, expanding, as you've heard today, expanding our agent-based evacuation model, which was mainly used for buildings, uh, making this into an urban-based evacuation tool, which incorporates pedestrians and vehicles, uh, as well as coupling to wildfire. So it brings together the three bits of the problem, uh, uh, the fire itself and how it's spreading, pedestrians and the people, and vehicles. Thanks very much. Thank you very much. <coughs> so uh, as Stefano mentioned in this, uh, in this presentation today, firefighters and incident commanders uh, and people who are in charge of managing evacuations need computer models. And these computer models need to be integrated uh, so that there is one integrated system that uh, people can use to manage and uh, plan and prepare for uh, wild, uh, wildfire evacuations and for large scale evacuations in, in general. I would like to contribute the, uh, like to acknowledge the contributions of the co-authors of this uh, work and the uh, staff members work in the Fire Safety Engineering Group working on this uh, project. Dr. Peter Lawrence, um, myself, Anand Guraswamy, there's uh, David Martin over here. Um, we have Darren Blackshee is working on the vehicle simulation. Uh, Lazarus Filipides, Veronica Haleshni, who is working on uh, the pedestrian interaction with vehicles, and Professor Edgar Yako is the uh, research director of the Fire Safety Engineering Group. So the main topics that we covered in this uh, presentation today are I'll give a very short introduction to the Fire Safety Engineering Group which we work for, uh, the introduction, an introduction to Exodus, the evacuation simulation tool, the uh, large scale evacuation modeling in general, the computer simulation tools are beneficial to plan and manage large scale evacuations. So we're going to look at three different uh, simulation tools, the pedestrian simulation tool, the vehicle simulation tool, and the wildfire simulation tool. And the key thing about the integration of the simulation tools and how this integration can be used to manage and plan and prepare for large scale evacuations. The Fire Safety Engineering Group was, pro was founded by Professor Ed Gallia, and today it consists of uh, 30 researchers, which include fire engineers. So we are a very multidisciplinary group. We have computational uh, fluid dynamics specialists, psychologists, mathematicians, and software engineers who implement the mathematical models into uh, software simulation tools. The research interests include the mathematical modeling and the experimental analysis of evacuation, circulation of, of people, and also the fire spread. So we have two very successful commercial products, well-established and well-validated models. First, the Exodus, the uh, pedestrian dynamics uh, circulation analysis tool, which is widely used in the, sa uh, in the safety industry. Smart Fire, which is the uh, computational flight uh, fluid dynamics tool used for uh, modeling the fire spread. And our application areas include buildings, aerospace, the evacuation of uh, aircrafts, ships, rain, and uh, this today our pre the presentation is going to focus more on urban scale evacuation. This video you see here is a very good example of the integration between uh, Exodus and Smart Fire. So, and it's a recreation of uh, the station nightclub uh, fire that took place in Rhode Island in the United States in 2003. Uh, so the, the integration with the fire model has, uh, has been able to give us the location of the fatalities. It also showed uh, people crawling when the smoke uh, enters into the area. So initially we see all the people utilizing the main exit because that's the exit that they came in and that's the exit that they, that they know about. But once there is a congestion around the main exit, we see people moving towards the other emergency exits. So looking into the uh, Exodus software, it consists of six main uh, submodels. The geometry submodel uh, looks at the spatial representation of the space that we are modeling. So in case of buildings, the space consists of the rooms, the corridors, the doors, and other features. In case of urban scale evacuations, 
the, uh, the spatial representation includes the road network, the buildings, the, the uh, pavements, the uh, other areas that are used by people and vehicles to evacuate. The occupants of model represents people as agents. So each agent has to have their own attributes, movement attributes, which determine their movement uh, within buildings. And these movement, the walking speeds of people are based on empirical data. So we conduct trials and uh, surveys in order to capture the uh, behavior data and the movement data, and we convert these into mathematical models, and these are implemented within the uh, simulation to uh, Exodus. So the behavior attributes or uh, uh, features include the uh, interaction between people and with people, people and fire. So we see people um, getting affected by smoke and uh, gases and heat. And this uh, we also model the interaction between people and structure. So the unique uh, features of Exodus include the ability to uh, simulate the impact of heat, smoke, and toxic gases uh, on the evacuation capability of individuals. And Exodus has a very uh, extensive validation history. Now, why do we need to use evacuation simulation tools? Uh, so this is uh, an area, the, the Bracknell town that Rob uh, spoke about in his uh, presentation. So this part of the town is very close to the, the Swinley forest, uh, forest. And in May 2011, there was a fire that started here. Fortunately, during that fire, the, the road over here acted as a, as a fire break. So it did not really enter into the uh, populated or the, the, the area with the, with, with the commercial uh, establishments. So we have the transport research lab over here, consisting of about 800 people when we modeled it. Uh, in, in conjunction with Rob. Um, and then we have the industrial estate consisting of 200 people. And, but recently there have been some housing establishments that have uh, recently come into place over here. So in, in conjunction with uh, Rob, we determined the, num the number of people in these establishments and we established that people would, uh, would uh, gather in the assembly area in the, in, in the Great Collins uh, Recreation Ground. So if we didn't have simulation tools such as Urban Exodus, we could uh, utilize Google Maps and OpenStreetMaps to determine how much time it takes for, or on average, for a person to go from point A to point B. But this doesn't take into account the notification times, the response times of the people, the group dynamics uh, involved when people evacuate as a group. So when people evacuate as a group, uh, they tend to modify the walking speeds based on either the fastest or the slowest person in the group. So we see that here, the urban exodus estimates the first person to reach from the transport research laboratory to the assembly area to be 20.8 minutes, which is not very far off from Google Maps estimation. But however, if you consider the last time for the people to enter, uh, to reach the assembly location, uh, it's it's more than half, it's, it's it's almost double the time uh, as estimated by Google Maps. So it's very important for, uh, for us to take into account the behavior features and the notification times and response times of people when, uh, when, when it comes to estimating how much time is required to evacuate a populated region. Wild model wildfire evacuations, uh, the, this is, has been discussed quite well in the, uh, the bill speakers uh, today. So the number and magnitude of fires is increasing globally, and here it's, uh, it's, it has reached Europe as well, with two tragic events in uh, Portugal and Greece very recently. So wildfire evacuation is a very important safety issue, and managing wildfire uh, large-scale evacuations is a great challenge, because authorities need to know when to issue the evacuation orders, and what warning to give them, to, uh, to order to evacuate or to shelter in place. As Steve mentioned in this presentation, um, two people died when they were, were asked to evacuate. So if the evacuation start late, it's, it's quite risky. So after a certain time, when the fire has already uh, reached the community, the, the safer option would be to uh, shelter in place. 
And we can also prioritize the areas to be evacuated. So a large fire affects different communities of different times. So if we know the times required uh, for the fire to reach these place, uh, and if you know the times required to evacuate these place, then we can prioritize uh, which areas uh, need to be evacuated first. So the three main motors that we, we have uh, uh, looked at in this uh, project are the, the pedestrian evacuation models, which deals with uh, evacuation by foot, the vehicle evacuation models, and the fire simulation models, which uh, model the spread of the fire. So during a uh, wildfire, majority of the, of the evacuations are vehicular. Uh, however, let's consider the evacuation of city blocks or central business districts, uh, which have large high-rise buildings uh, with tens and thousands of people taking the public transport to enter into um, the, 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 the district. And if the public transport were to be, was to be closed for some reason, uh, then people have no other way but to evacuate on foot. So it is very important to represent the uh, pedestrian evacuation on the vehicle uh, evacuation and also the, in the interaction between uh, pedestrians and vehicles. And also in the, uh, in the case of festivals where people uh, congregate, so they, they park their cars in another location and then they have to walk for a kilometer or two to reach the location of the festival. And so in these cases, we have to model the, uh, the evacuation of people by foot to the vehicles and then uh, drive, driving off from there. So it is very important to represent the notification and response times of the population, which can be done by the pedestrian model and which can then be fed into the uh, vehicle simulation tool. <laughs> the main mode of evacuation in case of wildfires in, in most of the countries, uh, such as Australia and California, is uh, uh, through vehicles. The vehicle routing strategies are crucial for large-scale evacuations, and it is important to identify the uh, areas of congestion. So the evacuation simulation tools should be able to uh, determine or estimate the areas that could be congested, and authorities could place uh, measures, uh, they can put measures in place uh, to, to manage the congestions uh, of these places. So we consider two main open source uh, tools for uh, integrating with uh, the pedestrian simulation tools, which was Matsim and Sumo. So Matsim is a coarse node model, and Sumo is a fine node model. And the reason we went, um, we chose Sumo to integrate with Open Exodus is because Sumo is a fine node model, and since we wanted to represent the integration between uh, uh, pedestrians and vehicles, that was the most uh, suitable one. SUMO was developed by at the Institute of Transportation Systems at the German Aerospace Center. It directly imports OpenStreetMap data to read the uh, data on the road, road networks. And this, this was a very good thing because for the past seven to eight years, we've been working on OpenStreetMap data and how to utilize the OpenStreetMap data for, uh, for modeling the evacuation of pedestrians. So it is a good thing that both the pedestrian simulation tool and the vehicle simulation tool could both utilize uh, the same map data. Uh, Sumo provides various APIs to remotely control simulations, example, the, the Python Track CI library, which stands for the uh, traffic control interface. So and this gives us a way of integrating the, the two simulation tools, the vehicle and pedestrian simulation tools. Wildfire models utilize uh, the vegetation data, the ground elevation, the wind speed and direction data in order to estimate the spread of fire over time. They're useful to determine the time available to evacuate an area. So in this case, a fire has started in the forest over here, and this is the same um, case, again, the Swilly Forest Fire. This is actually a, a simulated fire rather than the actual, the real fire. So there is a certain amount of time that's available for the uh, population over here to, to evacuate. And wildfire simulation tools are currently used in operation today to determine uh, the time it takes for a fire to reach a, uh, a populated region, which gives the authorities time to manage the evacuation of these areas. 
Currently, most of the wildfire models do not have a very accurate estimation of smoke and embers. But once this is available within wildfire models, then urban exodus will uh, include these in, uh, when we integrate uh, the, the two, uh, when we integrate with the hazard, the wildfire simulation tools. Uh, now, we've looked at the three uh, simulation tools. And now, in the next few slides, we're going to look at the integration between these uh, simulation tools. This slide shows the integration between Exodus, the pedestrian simulation tool, with Sumo, the vehicle simulation tool. So previously we saw a slide showing uh, the six core submodels of the uh, Exodus uh, model. Now with the introduction of uh, the vehicle mo model, we, we now have two new submodels, the vehicles and vehicle movement uh, submodel. And we can see that there is interaction between the vehicle movement submodel and the pedestrian movement submodel. And the interaction here is basically about the, the passing of the locations of people to the vehicle model so that, so that the vehicle model knows to control the uh, speed of the vehicle so, they, so the vehicle can slow down and stop uh, when it encounters people or pe uh, pe uh, pedestrian agents on the road. And similarly, the uh, pedestrian movement model needs to know the location of vehicles so that it, it can uh, control the, the crossing behavior of people. And the integration between Exodus and Sumo has been done using a Python track CI. So the Python track CI is like a messaging system which passes the information of the locations of uh, uh, people and uh, the vehicles to uh, the model, be between the two models. This video shows a very simple um, demonstration of the integration between Urban Exodus on the left and Sumo, the vehicle simulation tool on the right. So Sumo controls the vehicle movement, so you can see the cars stopping at traffic lights and uh, moving forward. So Sumo controls the movement of the vehicles and also manages the interaction between the vehicles. So Exodus, by copying the locations of the vehicle at each time step, is able to, um, to, to model the vehicle into the, into the pedestrian evacuation model. Now in, in another video, I'll show you the interaction between the pedestrians and vehicles as well. So now the, uh, the integration of Exodus with hazard models. Exodus considers the impact of hazards on evacuation performance and health of agents. Exodus is one way coupled with hazard models, and hazard models act as an input uh, to Exodus. So in the uh, FP7 IDERA project and uh, in the uh, currently ongoing Horizon 2020 uh, INTRA project, we have uh, not only modeled wildfires, but we've also modeled uh, flood simulations. Uh, we've also integrated flood simulation tools, chemical simulation, uh, chemical spread uh, tools as well, and uh, also earthquake uh, tools as well. So the hazard simulation, the way the integration between hazard model and the exodus, the pedestrian or the uh, the evacuation model has been uh, integrated is the hazard simulations have to complete the simulations. We then take the results generated by the hazard model, and then we integrate them into the uh, evacuation simulation tool in order to uh, determine the potential fatalities, which is the agents uh, that fall inside the fire polygons. And we can also estimate the injuries to inhabitants as well. Um, so which is the, the effect of toxic gases, the exposure of the effect of the exposure to the toxic gases and the heat as well in case of uh, wildfires. So Exodus can provide a crude estimation of the injury levels based on the hazard propagation data received from the hazard model. This uh, animation here shows a very simple uh, demonstration of the integration of the Sparks fire simulation tool, which is a tool that is widely used in Australia with with Exodus. Uh, so this is showing a, a simulation of the evacuation of this blue polygon 
uh, and they, who are now moving towards the targets, which are, are which are circled around here. Uh, we, I'm stepping into the uh, in one hour into the simulation when we receive the first uh, isochrone, fire isochrone of the fire perimeter. There it is. So there's 28 people, and Urban Exodus has marked these 28 people as potential fatalities, and uh, it's, it's going to take them away from the simulation. Uh, this is a very crude example of how the fire uh, simulation results can be in integrated within uh, the Exodus uh, simulation tool. So in this case, we see people walking into the uh, fire, fire zones, but uh, we, could, we can also model people redirecting uh, from these uh, fire polygons. So some of the key data that, is, uh, that can be generated by Urban Exodus is the total evacuation time, the number of, uh, the, the amount of time people spend in uh, uh, congestion, uh, the response time of people, the total, uh, the average distance travel, et cetera. Now in the previous animation, we saw the, uh, the determination of potential fatalities by the evacuation simulation tool. Uh, but consider the scenario where an agent escapes from the fire within a few seconds or within a few minutes after the fire has compromised a road section. Uh, the model would consider that to be uh, that, that person to be safe because he has escaped. But in reality, uh, if things were to be different, uh, if the fire was a bit faster, if the evacuation started a bit later, this person could have actually uh, been in danger. So thus comes the, uh, the concept of safety margins. So in, in this, uh, we, we see uh, a, a road, a segment of the road, and the location of a person moving along this road. So at time T1, the person's over here. At time T2, is here, T3, uh, T6 is, is over here. So concurrently, as the evacuation model uh, simulates the movement of a person or a vehicle, the uh, fire simulation two models the, uh, the spread of the fire, which is over here at T1, T2. At the time T6, the, the fire has uh, compromised a section of the road. So we calculate the safety margin uh, for this person uh, to be <coughs> to be T6, but the fire has uh, hit the road section, uh, minus T4. So T4 is the time at which the agent uh, reached, uh, cleared this area. So he has a safety margin of uh, T6 minus T4, which could be converted into uh, actual X, X, X amount of uh, minutes. So similar to the uh, time-based safety margin, we also have a distance-based safety margin. So if a person is are quite close to the fire, and as uh, uh, Professor Gellin mentioned, it is, it's, a, it's, about, it's not just about the fire front, but we have to also consider the smoke front and uh, the ember as well. So the distance-based safety margin for this person, uh, since the fire hits this road at time T6, the distance-based safety margin will be uh, the distance between LPT4 and LPT6. This, this slide shows the timing of uh, evacuation orders, and uh, this is a, bit, a little bit similar to what uh, Steve Quinn uh, mentioned in his uh, presentation as well. Uh, so let's consider a fire that has started in a, uh, in, in, in a forest, and it takes a certain amount of time for the uh, fire to reach uh, the, 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 the populated area. Now, after the fire has started, there's a certain amount of time that goes into detecting the hazard, which is uh, called as a hazard detection time on this slide. So this fig uh, figure shows the timeline of events that happen, and this is just an example. I mean, these time windows uh, shown here could be different for different uh, situations. So once the hazard has been detected, uh, then people, uh, the authorities then perform an assessment of the hazard. Uh, the, the, the performance assessment, the, the assessment to determine what is the, the hazard impact time, which is the time it takes for the fire to travel from, uh, from a location to a populated region. Now, a large fire could affect different communities at different times. So these, the hazard impact times could be different for the different uh, regions. 
Um, and, and then the, this uh, concept to help us to determine when to provide the evacuation warning. So the evacuation warning here is not a point in time, but it can be uh, a, a period of time. And the evacuation warning, the safe time to give the evacuation warning is um, as long as we have sufficient time with the offset. The offset is the time it takes to, to, to evacuate the, the, the populated region. So, but the offset can be calculated uh, through simulation tools or it could be uh, calculated through trials. However, these, the, the trials could be taking place under uh, sunny day conditions. And during fire, during a, 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 a dynamic hazard evolution, uh, the things are not ideal. Uh, we could have smoke hindering the evacuation. Uh, we could have roads being blocked uh, hindering the evacuation. So we need to add a safety factor to the required safe evacuation point. So the, the evacuation warning has to be given sometime prior to uh, the, uh, the, the offset plus the safety factor. So if it takes six hours to uh, for, for a fire to reach an area, and if it takes two hours to, to evacuate a community, and if the safety factor is two hours, then the population needs to be uh, warned at least four hours before um, the hazard impacts. Our work with the urban scale evacuation uh, started officially with the EU FP7 project uh, IDEVA and we uh, developed a prototype version of uh, urban ex exodus software which we call urban exodus which can be used for large scale em uh, emergency applications. Uh, this, this can be used for any uh, uh, kind of uh, disaster uh, disasters uh, such as earthquakes, floods, um, wildfires. Uh, of the idea, the work has continued with two Horizon 2020 projects, the GeoSafe uh, project, and uh, which, is the, which is in the scope of this um, uh, workshop, and the INPREP uh, project, which is a, another research and innovation project. So we have two different versions of the Urban Exodus uh, software called Urban Exodus and Web Exodus. Uh, so both the Urban Exodus and Web Exodus utilize the same evacuation uh, simulation engine, but these are two different graphical user interfaces. So Urban Exodus is a computer, is a desktop uh, simulation tool which requires a software to be installed on your computers, whereas Web Exodus does not require a software to be installed. You can open up a browser and uh, start using it. And we'll be seeing Web Exodus in the afternoon session in the, the hands-on uh, session. So urban exodus is typically used during the planning and preparation phase when there's a lot of time uh, for available for the civil protection authorities to plan uh, the, the evacuation, to plan various water scenarios. Whereas web exodus, since it's easy to use uh, and it's more easily available on uh, multiple devices such as tablets and mobile phones, can be used by incident commanders on the field and mobile uh, command control centers as well uh, to take the decision to, to work as a decision support tool to help authorities decide when to evacuate. So on the left hand side we see uh, the urban exodus simulation and on the right on the right hand side we see the web exodus simulation. Uh, one of the key differences over here is the map background that you get in Web Exodus, which makes it easy to visualize the, the evacuation simulation data. So this is uh, the evacuation of the Kennedy Wharf area, uh, consisting of about 15,000 agents. Uh, so the agents are represented by the blue dots, and they're moving, they're evacuating uh, to, the, to the north. Uh, let's skip this one and move into the conclusion of running out of time. So this research demonstrated a practical, a holistic solution using off-the-shelf tools uh, such as Sumo to effectively model the uh, complex multimodal uh, evacuations, incorporating dynamic uh, fire development. And the system uh, is deemed to be very beneficial to stakeholders who currently don't have access to an integrated system such as this. And the ability to model the interaction uh, or the interaction can help with both planning and training 
of crisis managers and assist them in uh, making real-time uh, decision-making during real-time situations. So in the intra project, uh, the, uh, this integrated system has been utilized in, uh, uh, to, uh, in a couple of uh, tabletop exercises and it's going to be utilized in a, a field scale exercise uh, very soon. So for the first time, crisis managers can evaluate how decisions impact impacting one part of the evacuation process may impact another. Uh, this is the final uh, animation I'm going to show you. It's about uh, the, again, a hypothetical um, evacuation of a, a train station. So, and this models the integration in the, in between the vehicle and pedestrian simulation tools. And it also models the risk-taking behaviors of people. So you have a few people, 50% of the people uh, crossing using the, the zebra crossing over here, but we have other people who take the risk. And the integration between the vehicle and pedestrian simulation tool helps us to, uh, you can see that the cars slow down and stop for pedestrians, and the pedestrians uh, stop in between the, uh, the road and wait uh, for a clearance in order to proceed. Th thank you very much for listening. Uh, I wonder if I could have the uh, speakers uh, from the session up uh, for